What do a wartime Prime Minister and one of the best-known writers of the 20th century have in common? Well, Winston Churchill was much older than George Orwell, and the two men never met. But they were dedicated to a common cause. So says writer Thomas Ricks in his new book, Churchill and Orwell, The Fight for Freedom. I spoke with him earlier. So, Thomas Ricks, what on earth made you want to write a biography encompassing both Winston Churchill and George Orwell? Well, to begin with, they're two heroes of mine. I think they were the greatest men of the 20th century. And one day when I was actually in Spain studying the Spanish Civil War, I realized that both Orwell and Churchill had been war correspondents, as I had been in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, and other places. And I went back and started reading all of Orwell again about three or four years ago. I was trying to figure out which journalist, British and American, would last. And I remember I read Mencken, I read S.J. Perlman, I read Hemingway. Then I read Orwell, and it was striking how different he felt. The others were all kind of stale, anachronistic, out of date. Orwell just felt contemporary, not only in his views, but his style. He was speaking to today's concerns. And that's something that he shares with Churchill. Churchill helped make the world we live in today. Orwell anticipated, described the world we live in the era of the all-intrusive state, the era of permanent warfare, the era of corporations that are more intrusive even than the state. You have a lot of detail in the book about how they both started as war correspondents, like your good self, but what do you think there is in that that shaped their view of the world? Well, they looked at war very differently. For Churchill, it was a grand adventure and a vehicle to fame to launching a political career. And Churchill always needed money, and he made his money from writing. One of the amazing things to me about Churchill that I don't think is well enough known is that his whole life was a torrent of words. He produced 15 million words in his lifetime. I think that's the equivalent to about a thousand books. And Orwell was transformed by his experience in Spain where he saw the right was lying about what was going on. But to his shock, as a socialist, he was very surprised to find the left lying equally. And he came back to London after he was shot through the throat. and. He read the newspapers and said, this has nothing to do with the realities that I saw. We worry about fake news now. At that point, Orwell became extremely focused on facts, and he insisted on finding out the facts were before he developed opinions. Now, 1984 is having another of its periodic bestseller periods, and, and you write in the book that Churchill and Orwell responded to a crucial moment in history with courage. Is that their lasting legacy to us? I think very much so. At a time when... Fascism and communism seen the only available alternatives when the British aristocracy was inclined to go with fascism and cut deals with Hitler. And when the British left was inclined to embrace Stalinist communism despite emerging knowledge of its horrors, these two said, no, there's a different way, there's a different approach. These two saw at that key moment in the late 30s that the key question of our time, their time but even into ours, the key question was, how do you preserve the freedom of the individual? The right to think freely, to associate freely, and to speak freely. For them, that became the key question of the 20th century, and they helped create the world we live in today by fighting for it. Thomas Ricks, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome.